Boo. <laughs> Got him. Get wrecked, dummy. First off, no, I am not legendary actor. Sam Elliott. But thank you. The mustache is actually for Movember. I do it every year in memory of my dad that raised money for positive men's health. This year I'm rocking the top lip people pleaser to help work towards suicide prevention. So if you can spare even a couple of dollars, I would really appreciate it if you went uh, to the description below and checked out the link there. And hey, if you can't afford it, that is completely fine. No worries at all. I know it's a hard time of year for a lot of people. I know the pandemic's really knocked a lot of us on our ass. So there's no need to donate if you can't afford it. All I would ask is simply that you go down and you have a look at the link. It's all about awareness. And at the very least, I would love it if you could see all of the great work that this foundation is really doing. Dark alleys, the Mariana Trench, Facebook comment sections. Bruh. What do all of these things have in common? Horror, they're, they're scary, it's hor- it, the, the theme is horror. If you've been around for a while, first of all, thanks. But second of all, you may already know this, if you're new though, also thanks. But I have written quite a bit of horror recently, especially in the last year. In the last year alone, I have written a psychological horror novel called Welcome Descent, and have short stories in both Local Haunts and we are not home. Both really great anthologies with 100% of profits going to charity. Today though, I would like to talk a little bit about how I approached writing the horror short stories for these books. I'm no Stephen King or anything, I'm no professor, but hey. Maybe it'll help. And the story that I'll be using as an example today for how I write a horror short story from scratch is my new horror short story in a new anthology called Served Cold, launching on December 11th. That's right, baby. Another one. Served Cold is the next anthology in line after Local Haunts, and it is an absolute beast. With 22 short stories from a huge list of authors, including yours truly. My story in Served Cold is called Red Albums, and the reason I'm using it as an example today is because it's a bit different to the stories I've written for the other anthologies. My other two short stories were pretty brief and mostly fun. I'd probably classify them as like campfire horror. My story in Served Cold, however, is much longer and much more, or intended to be, much more emotional and dark. I am super proud of it, and if I can be so bold, I think it's literally some of the best writing I've done. But you know, that's not for me to say. It's for other people to say about me. So, coming up with an idea for a story is pretty subjective. Almost any writer you ask will have a different explanation for how they started. It could be a dream, it could be based on something from your own life. But for me, the important thing is that I start off with one theme. That's all you really need to light the fire. So I've described it in this way in videos a few times already, but I'm gonna do it again because I think it's <laughs> I think it's a good analogy. But the way I would think of it is like a building block. Just take one theme, it could be hotels, neighbors, fear of heights. In this case, it was cold. Just one central point or plot device, or it could be a character that you can build your story around. And once you have that building block, all you need to do is start piling them up piece by piece. Imagine it's a game of Jenga and you're the sucker that got stuck with the job of setting it up. Bruh. My building block was cold, so I thought, cold, I could do snow. I could set my story in the snow, maybe a snowy valley. What is scary about a snowy valley? Well, maybe it could be isolated from other people. Just like that, boom, I have my setting. It doesn't have to be a setting that you end up with first, it could be a character or a bad guy slash monster. It doesn't matter where you end up first, all that matters is that it came from that one building block. Most times for me though, I will start with a setting, that's just kind of where my train of thought goes. And if I'm starting with a setting, I always try to make sure I have something I can add to that that makes it scary or dangerous. So again, a snowy valley that is far away from anyone that could help if something goes wrong. When it comes to settings and horror, most of the time it is going to be isolation that makes it scary. But maybe it could be that the setting is haunted. Maybe it could be that the setting is in a very high up place with danger of falling to your death. There are so many different ways you could go. Literally just right now, and I'm not even <laughs> taking the piss, uh, I was thinking to myself, in saying to myself high up with risk of falling to your death, I thought, what about a snowy cliffside? And the story is about someone who is stuck there with danger of sliding and falling to their death. And the story is about them trying to get to safety. That would be a pretty good horror story. Maybe they're on the side of a cliff, a bit of a snowy slope. 
and the only safety they have is at the top of that slope, but at the top of the slope is a pack of hungry wolves. Gee, I just, I literally just came up with a story idea right now. That's how easy it is. You know what? You guys can have that one. Obviously, a lot of this will come down to your creative ability as a writer, but once I figure out a character that we can experience the story with, I'll try to do something that is very tricky, but very important. So usually I try to make sure that the horror in the story scares the character for a very personal reason, rather than just, this thing is scary. And the way I think to do this is to give your character a bit of a backstory. In horror, that will usually take the shape of a past trauma. I know what you're thinking already, that sounds like a lot for a short story, but trust me. You can give a character a backstory even in the really short, short stories. For example, for my story in Local Haunts, it was called Alone Among the Gum Trees, which was a bit of a... <laughs> if you're Australian, you'll, you'll know. That story is a really quick and simple campfire story about a group of tourists in the Australian woods quite literally sitting around a campfire. But the main character is a young woman who is still dealing with the paranoia from leaving an abusive and predatory ex-boyfriend. You don't learn that from an info dump, you quite literally learn it just from a few sentences of dialogue from another character and the way that she acts around other people. Ultimately that abusive past does play a part in her experience in this horror short story. Spoiler alert, it's not that her ex-boyfriend comes back or anything like that, it's not directly relevant, but the feeling of being preyed on. It all comes back to that. Her backstory is barely mentioned, but it's relevant to what is happening now. The point here is, and this is going to sound a bit weird so bear with me, but you don't actually need to tell us the story of their backstory. You can allude to it, in fact I think it's better if you leave most of it unspoken. Let the reader fill in the gaps. And they will. So in my story Red Albums for Served Cold, our character is a young man who must go back to his childhood home in a snowy valley. He's going there to care for his sick father, but he hoped to never see this home again. It is a constant reminder to his time as a drug addict, and the guilt from him being an addict because of the strain that it put on his father at the time. I obviously won't spoil anything, but his past plays a part in the horror of the story. His past as an addict is relevant to his decision making in caring for his sick father. And it all starts coming together when he starts seeing the sickness for what it truly is. I hope all of that made sense. Obviously I have to be kind of cryptic when I'm referring to my own stuff to avoid spoilers. But the main takeaway here should be that you can say a lot about a character's past without saying too much at all. And personally I think the less you say, the better. Hint to their past, tell us about their past and the way they act around other people. It makes the characters more relatable and it makes the reader care more about their well-being. And if the reader cares more about their well-being, if the character is scared, the reader probably will be too. Now as far as outlining goes, what I normally do when I write like a novel is I'll do a small paragraph outline for each chapter that I intend to be in the book. What happens in those chapters obviously can and often do change, but the point is that it helps me to know whereabouts in the book the story should rise and fall. In regards to like tension and conflict and exciting moments, it just helps with the structure. As for short stories though, you usually won't have chapters. I'll often still create like little character profiles listing their physical attributes like eye colour and physical quirks, for example if they clench their jaw when they're angry, but I don't really do much more outlining when it comes to short stories. I will have maybe a few paragraphs giving a small description of what happens and the order I would like those things to happen in, but really that's about it. One of my favourite things about horror is that the ending really can go any way. There's no shame in killing off the protagonist in a horror story, especially a horror short story, or in giving them a happily ever after. I've done both, but what it usually comes down to is this. The feeling that I want the reader to be left with. In almost all cases, the last page of the story is what the reader is going to be thinking about for a fair while after they finish. Do you want the reader to be happy and have some catharsis in this character rising above their fear and winning, or do you want to leave the reader scared or maybe even sad with an ending where the protagonist loses? Both is fine, in fact I think happy endings are super underrated in horror, but that's a big discussion for another day. The thing you need to keep in mind though is that the ending of the story should have the character 
in some kind of different place than where they started, or in a different state of mind to where they started. The one thing you don't want is an ending where nothing truly important happened or changed. Anyway, like I said, I'm not a professor, I'm not an expert, uh, I really wouldn't want you to think that I'm claiming to be. This video is more just me talking kind of at myself, telling myself what my thought process is when I'm writing a horror short story. And if it happens to help you, great. And if it doesn't, you know what, go ahead, dislike the video, load the video on your phone, put the phone on the ground and fart on it. I don't, I don't care. Actually, don't do that. I just made it sound like I have some kind of weird, like, fart kink. That should do it, but here's what I want you to do. I want you to go down to the comments and let me know what your thought process is when you're writing horror. Namely, what's important to you? As always, thanks for watching, especially for watching through the whole video. You are objectively the best. You're the best out of all of the people who've watched this video if you watch the whole thing through. You're the best. That's it for now though, so go write. Don't think I forgot, NaNoWriMo isn't over yet. Get to work. Oh, and hey, if you can spare a couple of dollars, again, the Movember link is in the description below. You would be helping out a really great course. But that's it. See you in the next one. Catch ya.